This took place in Canada in 2010 when I was about 32 years old and I get chills whenever I think back at this. To preface this, I've been hunting ever since I was 8, which some might argue as being too young to learn to shoot, but I was well trained by my dad who had been hunting his whole life. Throughout most of my life, I've spent a lot of time outdoors in several parts of the US and Canada. I've hunted deer, raccoons, squirrels, hogs, and even moose. I've never really came across anything strange during my time outdoors, except for a few people offering to sell me drugs. However, there was this one time I stumbled across something that really freaked me out. I was in northern Ontario and it was mid-September and hunting season had just begun which meant big game for the hunters. Even though there were moose around, it was still pretty rare to come across one, so I mainly settled with deer. After hours of looking for game, I continued searching for a new spot when I look ahead of me and notice what appeared to be a structure of some type about 80 yards away. At first, I thought that it could have been an old sugar shack, but I then came to the realization that it was an old cabin as it had a chimney. There were people who lived out here, but this cabin looked like it had been abandoned and run down for years. Being intensively curious, I walked over to it and got up my camera to take a few pictures. The wooden planks of the cabin was almost black from rot and mold. Windows had been smashed open and there were lots of abandoned graffiti. X was here, words relating to death, dates, initials, etc. Anyway, I take a few pictures with my camera and proceed to go inside. What used to be the front door had been blocked off by some planks so I ended up going through a window. To my surprise, there was no furniture or even doors just an old fireplace and there was no sign of anyone. The only source of light was from the sun peering in from the window frames. This is where shit starts to get crazy. As I'm walking toward the fireplace, I feel a cold hand grab my arm and I turn around to see absolutely nobody there. An instant chill ran down my spine and I got the hell out of there through the way I came. All the while, I was screaming my head off like a deranged lunatic, not caring how much noise I made. I was not going to look back to see who or what was there. At this point, the sun was starting to set, and I thankfully made it back to my truck in time, and sped down the road swearing to myself that I would never return. And that's what I did. I never went back to that place, and I ended up not going hunting for a while either. I don't know if whatever I felt was a person or something from the spiritual world, and I honestly don't want to know. All I can say is, there are truly some unexplained things in this world. This happened to me when I was in my 40s, and this is one of the strangest and most abnormal experiences I have ever witnessed in my entire adult life. I was backpacking while hunting in the mountains of northeast Georgia with my son, who we'll call David for privacy reasons. David was 10 at the time, and he had already learned the basics of hunting and firearm use when I taught him. Anyway. We had packed up our lunches for the trip and constantly switched to different areas for a good hunting spot. The next day, we were still on the hunt and were walking by a stream when I noticed a huge buck grazing on the other side. Probably one of the biggest I've ever seen. It was actually quite rare to see a buck that big and I motioned for my son to get down so that we won't spook it. I aim my gun at it and shoot. As soon as I did, the deer doesn't even flinch. I look a bit closer and I saw that I shot it in the heart. 
Blood pours from the wound, but the deer doesn't drop to the ground. Instead, it turns its head and looks at us. And what happens next scared the piss out of me and my son. It stands bolt upright and gets on its hind legs and starts running into the woods on two legs while making this loud screeching noise. My son looks at me with a scared, what the hell type face, and I tell him that we had to move. At this point, I was beyond scared and I could tell my son was too. I've hunted all types of animals in my life and I've never once seen an animal present such abnormal behavior. No four-legged animal runs off with their hind legs, that I know for a fact. He was being extra cautious now, while gripping his rifle a little tighter than usual. I tell my son to hurry, and we eventually make it back to the truck and leave the area. In the end, I end up telling my son that what we saw was nothing other than a skinwalker. I explain that these are natives that can transform into any animal they desire. They are very territorial and are mostly found in the southern regions of the US, but I guess they could be found anywhere. For some context, I'm a 35 year old male and I spent a lot, and I mean a lot of time camping, hiking, hunting, fishing, etc. I've done lots of these things throughout most of my life and absolutely loved the outdoors, especially when it came to hunting. Most of the time, I would hunt either deer or elk with my wife and I haven't come across anything strange until this one day. Let me explain. My wife and I were going hunting in a really large national forest in Cali. It was at least 40,000 acres of land and this forest was huge, which meant plenty of game for us. We always used this one really cool hidden spot located up on a hill that nobody had ever discovered as it was very much off the path and far away from locals. It was kind of like our secret go-to place for getting decent kills as there would sometimes be herds of elk passing through. Now, in order to get to this spot, you would have to hike up this treacherous rocky trail that really puts your legs to work. It was hard at first, but once you get to the top, you could see for miles, and the view is amazing. Anyway, I had been in front of my wife going up the steep path when I looked to my left and noticed what appeared to be a car about 40 feet away, and it looked like it had been there for years. I was perplexed as there are no roads that led here, so seeing a car this deep into the woods was beyond strange. I'd also like to note that we had been to this location two weeks prior and hadn't seen this car until now. However, seeing as this was a national forest, we had to report this to the ranger station. My wife and I walk over to the car and we see that there are a few dusty cardboard boxes inside and a few papers scattered. The car was a 2005 Toyota Camry. My wife and I opened the lids to see as to what contents were in these boxes, and we were shocked to find multiple papers of missing children, some of them even dating back to the 90s. Their names had been printed below their picture, as well as the day they had gone missing. Honestly, it's kind of like what you'd see on the back of a milk carton if you were around back then. As I'm taking a closer look at the papers, I notice at least half of them had the word deceased written across them with what looked to be a marker. What the hell was this? Some sort of psycho kidnappers wanting to hide their victim's fate? Some sick prank pulled by a bunch of obnoxious teens? I didn't know, and I'm not sure I want to. Not knowing what to do, my wife and I immediately called the ranger station as well as the sheriff. Multiple police officers arrived at the scene and had confiscated the papers of the missing victims. Turns out, the car had been stolen eight years ago but whoever the thieves were were never identified, 
and I had no idea what they did with the car. Me nor my wife have ever been back to that place ever since, and we don't plan on going anytime soon. Even though we didn't feel like we were in danger, this experience was enough to definitely creep us out for a very long time. My name is Danny, and I've spent a lot, and I mean a lot, of time camping, hunting, fishing, and all sorts of stuff having to do with the outdoors. For some context, I live in the Appalachian Mountains of Northeast Georgia with my son. It's a very scenic place to visit and go camping in, especially in the fall. It has some great hiking trails, some pleasant rivers, and of course, magnificent mountains. Those who have heard or been near the Appalachian Mountains will probably have a better understanding as to what I'm talking about. Anyway, it was the beginning of November and hunting season had just started which meant big game for the hunters. I've always admired the sport ever since my dad taught me back when I was a kid, and from there on I've been pretty good at it as well as my son. There are however some dangers I've been in while hunting or camping. Everything from a tornado heading my way to a massive thunderstorm and heavy rainfall, so I've been in some pretty sticky situations. Anyway, we were walking through the national forest with our hunting rifles while wearing long cargo pants and a jacket as it was surprisingly well into the 50s. My son Brandon was only 9 at the time, which some might argue as being too young to shoot, but I was a responsible parent and taught him the basic use of firearms. My first thought was to use the deer hunting tower that was hidden deeper into the woods, but I felt as if that were too advanced for him. Eventually, him and I sat down for a rest break when I noticed a seemingly large buck about 25 feet away. I told my son to get his rifle ready, but he ended up missing his shot, which made me annoyed but I knew he was still learning. With the deer now gone, my son then asks me if I see that object in the woods. I look at him and I see that he's pointing into the woods behind a few trees, when I see it. About 30 or so feet away was a seemingly large white container. Now I've been in this area many times before and not once have I ever ran across something like this. I told Brandon to stay put and not to move from his spot while I went to go check it out. The closer I got to the object. I began to realize what it actually was. About 10 feet away from me was not a container, but rather an old freezer. From the looks of it, it didn't look to be that old. In fact, it looked like it was here for, at most, a day or two. At this point, I was thinking, why in the world would there be a freezer laying out in the middle of the woods? However, as I got closer, a smell I could only describe as rotting flesh filled my nose. In fact, it became so bad that I had to cover my nose with my hat. Whatever that smell was, was surely coming from the freezer. It was illegal for locals to dump their unwanted garbage in a national forest, but I wasn't going to leave until I was sure what it was. Needless to say, I put on my gloves and took a deep breath to compose myself before figuring out what was inside. With my courage finally gathered up, I opened the freezer and see a black garbage bag tied up with several pieces of duct tape along with a cell phone. An iPhone 8 to be exact. There were multiple flies swarming around the bag, indicating that there was indeed something inside. Not knowing what to do, I call up the park ranger and inform him to contact the proper authorities. When they arrive, that a whole team of FBI agents and two detectives arrive in the scene while taking photos and questioning me. My wife came to pick up my son while I still got questioned. The following week, 
I was having my morning coffee when I was reading one of the papers and stumbled upon an article that shocked me. Apparently, about a week ago, there was a 16-year-old girl who had gone missing in the area and was never found. I felt as if a thousand pounds suddenly dropped on me as I remembered what I had found. The local authorities never updated me as to what happened, but I'm convinced till this day that what I found in that freezer was in fact a body. With the freezer being so far into the woods and with me finding the cell phone, was almost certain that my theory was correct. If you see something suspicious that you are unsure of, please, for the love of God, please do the right thing and contact the police.